We have row one done. How about one B? Hey everyone, Kristen Som here and I am back. As many of you know, I had surgery two and a half weeks ago, so I took some time off for recovery and I am back now and ready for playtime. So um, today's going to be kind of maybe a little big day. I'm not totally sure. You have some options though, I want to tell you. So we finished the first entire row and most of you are actually caught up. I'm quite amazed. And those that fell behind a little bit, because we did do this first row pretty quick. And um, because I wanted to try and get the first row done before surgery so that those people that were falling behind had time to work on them um, while I was recovering. So you weren't too bored. Um, but I know a lot of us have other projects to work on too. So Anyway, we have um, all of row one done and you guys are doing so amazing. So we did a personalization on our rolling pin. Some of us took out the um, quilting behind the dome on the cupcake. That was a nice learning stretch, fun things to do. So you have some options. You can start, you can wait, you can uh, work on something else while we work on this part. Um, because after we work on this part, we'll start on row two. But I get really bored doing, if we're going to do like the sashings and the inner borders and the outer borders and those corner blocks, I get really bored with that process. And so I like to break it up a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on row 1B, which is right under this block. It's those red and white patchwork, um, the row of patchwork blocks. And then with that, there's after that, there will be inner borders. You can absolutely wait and do all of your rows first and then work on your inner borders and sashing blocks. But to me, if we're going to work on the patchwork blocks and quilt that, it's kind of a waste because it's just one row and we'll have to do it in a bigger hoop. Like I'm probably going to use my 8x12 hoop. So I want another thing in there rather than the wasted um, hoop space. Does that make sense? So what I'm thinking is I'm going to do um, the patchwork blocks, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, and then I'm also going to start on the sashing blocks, just like I said, so that I have two things to work on in a hoop to use up hoop space and stabilizer and time and all of that. Plus, like I said, I get really bored if I'm doing, there's like seven of them, the sashing blocks and inner borders, there's seven of those, and then the outer borders, that will be another four, and then the four pinwheel blocks, so it's going to be a lot. And I know me and I know I'll get really bored with that whole process. And so if I break it up, I like to do like the whole row and then do some of the, um, the longer process, which is those inner and outer borders. So that's what I'm going to do. You can wait and do yours later at the end if you prefer. Um, and, or, and we'll start on row two soon. Totally up to you. Or you can jump in and use this as a stretch exercise. So I posted in our Facebook group that in Brilliance Essentials is having a special sale right now. So there, it's normally $149.95 and right now it's on sale for, I think it was $130. And then on top of that, they gave us a 10% off sale. So that's a really good sale. So on top of this sale price, you get another 10% off and the coupon I think it was spring 24 I'll add a screenshot of it um, but that is only good until April 9th so and this is a really good time because doing those all those sashing and inner borders it's a long process if you are not double doubling them up or anything like that and some people know how to do that on your machine and more power to you um, I just find it so quick and easy on software so I'm going to do that on software so again, if you have not purchased in Brilliance Essentials, now is the time for sure. I highly recommend it and I will show you how to do it step by step. All right, so make sure to use my affiliate link though when you purchase anything from Embrilliance, um, any of the Embrilliance products. Um, it's www.embrilliance.com slash jam affiliate slash Christian Creates and I'll add um, a link actually here. I'll add a link here, click on that, and it takes you to Embrilliance, and then you just choose Essentials if that's the software that you're looking to purchase. That's the one that I'm teaching. I also will be teaching how to use Thumbnailer very soon. Um, I just am getting started with that. 
But for now, in Brilliance Essentials, that's the one that I show on pretty much every video. All right, so like I said, I'm going to work on the patchwork quilt. Um, so one other thing I want to tell you, thank you so much to everyone that has been making donations to the channel and subscribing to the channel. Um, it helps out the channel. And I actually, with all of your donations, which have been, um, there were a, a good amount of donations in March. And I just want to show you. I bought a expensive microphone. I've had so much trouble with microphones and it's because I keep buying these cheapy ones. Um, but I invested in a good microphone. And so because of your donation. So I just want to thank you for that. And don't forget when you make a donation, please make sure to give me your email address. Some of you aren't in the Facebook group and I'm thanking you publicly and yet I don't have a way to contact you. So um, make sure to do that so that when we finish this project, if we make something special like a custom quilt label, I can send that to you when we finish up this project. But I need to know your email address and I need to know the format of your machine and which project you're working on. All right. So that's really important. Um, do, don't just send a donation and say thank you. Let me know who you are, or how to reach you. I would really appreciate that. All right, so let's talk about what our, we're going to work on today, the Patchwork 1B, all right? So grab your packet. If you made packets, you can see it's a nice, easy, small one. Um, but like I said, I'm going to add it in with the inner borders and sashings. I'm not going to do all of them, but I'm going to break it up and do some of them so that it's an easier process and not, not too tedious. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about these. So on these, this is the patchwork quilt blocks. So or patchwork row, I guess it's called. So you can see it is the red with pink, like pink and pink, maybe I'm not sure. Um, the tufted, I think it's called tufted. This is that fabric. All right. And we want 15 of these that are one and a half by one and a half. They're very little blocks. Um, I did stabilize mine. I did it just on the, the bits. You can do the entire row. It doesn't matter. Either way is totally fine. It's quite tedious when you do it this way. Not sure why I did it that way this time. I usually don't, but this time I, I did, and that works totally fine. It makes it so that there's nothing in your seams, um, and you can easily tell front from back, which is really helpful on these, the white blocks. All right, so let's talk about these first. So one and a half by one and a half, you can see which fabric it is. Um, small blocks, don't make them any larger or anything like that. Um, I know it's a tendency to want to make them larger um, because we're going to quilt these, but we're not going to because we're gonna sew them all together. And when we do that, we don't want, we want it to be the right size. All right, so one and a half by one and a half, 15 of the reddish pinkish ones. And then the other one, is the white it's funny it's like I yeah I, I backed them with stabilizer but I, on the white ones it looks like I just did the entire thing which it would have been smarter to do how I did the red ones where you can easily see the front from the back but I must have already had these um stabilized is my guess anyway so these are the um what do you call them the hound's tooth i think that's what it's called all right and again one and a half by one and a half i did stabilize mine um i don't think these are going to be on anything we're going to use batting so i don't think you have to worry about the the color bleeding through but i do like to stabilize them and we are going to quilt them so 15 of these at one and a half by one and a half so two sets right so we've got the reddish pinkish and the white and we're going to do um, um opposite so red white red white red red white and we're going to sew them all together with a quarter inch seam allowance okay and then we need our batting put them back in your packet so you don't lose them so on our batting measure your row all right so depending on your blocks and your seam allowance make sure to measure your row okay mine came out to 30 and a half 30.5 is how long my row is and I know that if think about these are those little blocks are one and a half by one and a half and we have 15 of them so that is going to come out to 30 and a half exactly all right it should come out to exactly 30 and a half because we're using that quarter inch seam allowance to sew each of them together so then we're going to want a piece of batting that is 30 inches long times one inch don't make it one and a half one inch all right one inch times 30 inches and then when you after what i'm going to do is i'm going to sew all of those red and white blocks together and then i'm going to put my batting on and when i put my batting on 
as I'm putting it on, it may get a little bit longer. And so I will check it. What it, what we're, our goal is, is to have a half inch, a quarter inch on each side extra where there isn't any batting in our seams. And if it works out that your batting is in your seams, it's not a deal breaker. It's not a really big deal. All right. But that's the goal is to try not to get it, not to have batting in our seams. It's less bulky and looks nice. All right. So one inch times 30 inches to start with, and then we'll see as we um, put it on our patchwork quilt. So our patchwork quilt, we are going to quilt it. I forgot to look it up. I think it was Christmas three border. I'm pretty sure I'll add a little note in here saying um, what quilting design. I, I believe it was Christmas three border and we want the one inch design. So there's a one inch and I think three and four, maybe I'm not exactly sure, but we want the one inch and it's got like these little holly leaves on it and it will be really cute. Um, so for that, um, make sure it's the border design. All right. That's really important because the, the one that's not a border is not going to have that one inch design. We want a one inch design for our quilting. So there will be a one by seven, a one by 10, a one by 12 and a one by 14 design. And I already peeked at it. And, um, we want, a, we want 30 inches of quilting, right? Our, our, um, patchwork row is going to be 30 inches long really 30.5 because of that quarter inch seam allowance on each side so we want all of that quilting so the one by seven is actually seven inches long the one by ten I think it was like nine and a half or nine and three quarters, not a full 10 inch. If it were a full 10 inch, then you could just do three of those easy peasy, but it's not, it's a little bit less. And if that's what you want to use, that's absolutely fine. You can do that. I prefer to have my quilting all the way. So I'm going to do the one by 12 and I'll do that twice. I don't remember what that came out to. Cause it was, I think it's like 11.75. And then, so we need like, I think it was six and a half inches left of quilting. So I'll do a one by seven. So two hoopings, of the one by 12 and one hooping of the one by seven and it will work out right. So again, if you choose a quilting design that is too long, it'll just run off onto your stabilizer. It's not going to matter as long as your batting is the right size. It's going to be totally fine. Um, so it has to depend on your hoop options. All right. So I'm going to use my eight by 12 or probably my seven by 12 hoop. Um, to do this. And then I'm also going to do a sashing in that extra hooping because that's going to be with the same quilting design um, because it's that one inch design and then I won't I won't have to waste all that extra hoop space okay because we're just doing one row of that patchwork row so hopefully I gave you all the information on that 30 inches long for your batting the one inch design I think it was Christmas three border I'm not absolutely sure but I will add information on that so the other thing and again this is optional you don't have to do this you can work on you can start on row two or you can wait for us to start on row two because we are going to do a couple of little things on that um, or you can do just your patchwork um, row if you want to or if you want to you can add in some of the sashings I'm going to do some sashings because to break it up so if you're doing that with me grab your sashings um, I don't recall I know that this is a retired fabric and I don't know if she told me what the um, substitute is let's see substitute was green with white dots so um, you may have received if you bought from our sponsor at your best friend's quilt shop um, you may have received a green with white dots on it um, if you have the original this is the original one it's green with multi dots on it all right multi christmas colored dots on it all right and that's what we're going to use for our sashings and our inner borders so the sashings are the ones that are in between the quilt. The outer borders are all the way outside of it. Um, inner borders, sorry. Inner borders all the way outside of the entire quilt block. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So on this picture, you can see. So the ones that have that are inside of the rows, those are called sashings. The ones on the outside, these are called inner borders, all right? So I'm probably, depending on how much time I have, I'm probably going to do all of these. So all five of these, there's one, two, three, four, five. I'll probably go ahead and do those. Um, and then I'm going to leave the two outer ones for the last step after we complete all of the four rows because we want to measure those to know exactly how much quilting that we want all right but these we know all of you can see all of the rows are the same size so they should all end up being about 30.5 depending on your seam allowance and and your own personal block so 
Um, either way, we're not going to cut them all the way down. So I'm going to just leave those strips just to make sure at the end. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, all right. So inner borders and sashings. Like I said, I'm going to probably do all five. I might just do one. I mean, you could do one because you're. The point is to get that um, patchwork row done, and then we need um, space for that other thing in the hoop. And again, you don't have to do that, but I'm going to add it in. So on these, what is it? We want seven of them all right and they are going to be times with a fabric so don't cut them down yet all right I always recommend not cutting them down or if you need to cut them down cut them down like two inches longer than what it says in the book let me get to that page sorry I lost it because I went back to show you that picture all right so on the inner borders and sashing so we want seven of them that are one inches but don't do that I always recommend do one and a half okay because we're gonna cut it down we want our since we're quilting in the hoop remember this was before the quilting so they didn't quilt in the hoop they just um, did one inch borders and, and slapped it on we're gonna quilt them and then we're gonna sew them with a quarter inch seam allowance so we want ours to be one and a half if you cut yours ages ago then you can do one inch it's it's not gonna be a big deal the extra of the quilting will run off onto the stabilizer it will work out it's not a huge big deal but if you haven't pre-cut from years ago <coughs> excuse me sorry <coughs> I should have brought my water um, so one and a half inches is my recommendation times with the fabric. So big, long strips. Okay. One and a half inches. And we're going to want seven of those one and a half times with the fabric. And again, you can work, you can wait on these. You can do one with your, um, patchwork row, or you can do the first five. All right. If you want, whatever you have time for is totally fine. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna bring you over to the computer to show you how to merge them together if you decide to do that so that you have less hoopings and using less stabilizer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Hey everyone, so I'm at my computer now. I have not set up my new microphone yet, so hopefully this one will um be okay hopefully the new one will be even better once i get it set up so um i'm gonna just quickly show you how to use some brilliance essentials to put together our um sashings and that um, patchwork border it actually is going to be exactly the same process because the quilting is the same so i am going to open up in brilliance essentials um, that is the software I use. I get a lot of people that ask, which in Brilliance? In Brilliance Essentials. That is the one that I always teach. I'm just moving it over here so my head's not in your way. Um, <clears throat> all right, so when it opens up, down here at the bottom, you can see what hoop size you're on. So I'm on my 8x12. I think I'm going to change to my 7x12 just to save a little bit of stabilizer. So if you go to Preferences up here, you can choose the hoop size that you want and then say OK. And then it helps if you click on this hoop, this uh, compass, and then the H for hoop, and it'll zoom into the hoop so that you can see it well. I'm actually going to shrink this down just a little. We've got it pretty big right now. Okay, so move it over here again. Okay, so I'm going to open up the folder. So there's a couple of ways you can bring in your design. You can click this merge stitch file button and then navigate to the folder that has the quilting file that you want. I actually have mine open right here, so I'm just going to have that folder. I'm going to shrink down this folder. All right, so you can open up the folder that it's in and then just drag it over. So one thing I want to point out, see how this shows the quilting files? That's because I have, um, what is it called, the, the, the thumbnailer, um, and Brilliance Thumbnailer. I just got that recently and haven't shown it yet but it shows the design. So I'm in list view. If I were to go to view um, and then extra large, you can see all of the files. So remember I was saying that there's a one by seven, look, there's also a two and a three. And then once we jump to the four inch, then it's the other um, quilting, border quilting design. All right, so, sorry, there's a car outside. I'm surprised my dogs aren't barking. All right, so we want a one inch design. So I mentioned to you earlier that I'm gonna use the one by 12 because the one by 10 isn't actually um, the size that we need. If I hover over it, 
um, it tells me, let's see here, it's 1.5 by 9.4, and I want a full 10 inches of quilting. I want 30 inches of quilting, so I know I need at least three hoopings, depending on your hoop size, um, but that one's going to make it a little bit too short, so I'm going to go with the 1 by 12, and I hover over that, and it says it's 1.5 times 11.8, so I know that I want that one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and drag it over. So all I did was click and drag it over to my workspace, and it loads it right to the center. All right, so while I'm here, um, I'm just clicking on the in brilliance so that the folder isn't highlighted. Um, you can close your folder, whatever works for you. Maybe I'll do that so it's out of our way. I'll shrink it down. All right, so there's our quilting design. Now I need two of these, but before I do that, I want to um, change the color. So I'm gonna click on this, to this um, design. So the one, that plus sign, Click on that and you can see the five steps. So the five steps of the quilting, number one is the placement stitch for the batting. Number two is the tack down stitch of the batting. Number three is the placement stitch for those the border strips fabric. Number four is the tack down stitch of the fabric, the strips. And then the fifth step, see the numbers are here, the fifth step is the actual quilting design. All right, so the problem if we don't change these colors, there goes our dogs. I knew that they'd be freaking out at some point. Um, anyway, if we don't change these colors, see this default one blue and default one blue, those are going to join together. And I don't want them to join together. I want those stops, all right? But since I'm going to add my batting on, and I'll show you that process too, but I'm going to add my batting right onto my strips. And since I'm going to do that, I actually don't need the placement or the tack down of the batting. So what you can do, I'm going to leave it on so I remember to tell everyone to bypass it. But what you can do is you can click outside here and drag to the left to get the steps one and two, and you can delete them. You're, you do not need them if you're adding the batting onto your fabric like I'm gonna show, all right? If you're not going to do that, you wanna keep them in, but if you delete them, then look at none of the colors need changing, all right? So that's easy to do. Like I said, I'm gonna keep it in just so that I can tell those people that aren't using the software um, to bypass those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly click on just number one. That's the only one that, see, there's a default one blue twice, and I just don't want those to join. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm just going to change the color. So I clicked on number one, one, click on the color, and then the colors come up, and I'm just going to change it to dark aqua. It doesn't matter what color. Um, and I had someone say that you can just click on all of them, and it will change to your default thread color. But keep in mind that that doesn't change the fact that, it, that they will still join. That's why the point is to change the color so that they, the ones you want to join will join and the ones you don't want to join will not join. All right, so this one is not going to join with this blue now because now it's a dark aqua. All right, I hope that makes sense. And like I said, you don't need one and two. So there's our first one. That one's all done. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this over to the left. My husband just got home, so it's loud. Excuse that. All right, so there's that first one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and say Control C to copy this, because, oh, I don't have it clicked on, sorry. I'm gonna click on number one, the first design, and say Control C to copy it. And then I'm gonna say Control V, like victory, to paste it. And then now I have two of them. So there's the first one and the second one. It looks like there's only one, sorry, Lily's shaking right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just click on that second one and move it over. All right. Looks like we could even fit three. Hmm. There's seven, five, six. You know what? I think I'm going to do three in one hooping because if I, there's five of the sashings and in, inner border top and bottom and one of the um, patchwork row. So that means six of them Instead of two and one hooping, I could do three and one hooping and knock them all out quick and easy. I'm going to do that. So because of that, I'm going to change to my eight by 12 hoop instead. I'm clicking on this preferences folder, clicking on my eight by 12 hoop, say, okay. And now notice I have to move these two again, but that's like really easy. We're going to save a lot of time in stabilizer today. All right. So there's that first one. I'm going to move this second one over to the middle. 
I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to move this to the center. I'm using the black um, squares at the top and the bottom to be able to center it. All right, so now I have two. I'm going to say control V to get a third one, and I'm going to just grab that and move it over to the right. You can use your mouse to do that, or you can use your arrow keys either way. Look at how easy that was. I didn't even think of it at the time. I was just thinking two and one hooping. We can get three and one hooping and jam through. So one of these will be the patchwork row, and then the other two will be the sashings. But they're the same quilting design, so it doesn't matter at all, all right? Um, and you can use a different quilting design if you prefer. I just used one to save on money, um, thinking that we'll use that for um, the one inch borders, the sashing borders, and for that patchwork. Um, but you, if you wanted, you could actually choose a different quilting design. All right, so I'm on border Christmas three, and that's all I needed to do. I've got those three in one hooping. I will do that three times. I'll actually do this one twice, and then I'm gonna do one that's a seven inch. So this one is all done. <clears throat> like I said, I'm gonna do this twice. I wanna make sure to do a file save as. Before we do that, we need to do a color sort. I almost forgot, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's really important. So right now we have 15 color steps. So I'm gonna go to utility color sort, and it thinks, thinks, thinks. And while we're here, let me remind you, tolerance zero, this is really important. You don't want any of these checked and you want your tolerance at zero to be able to get the same results that I'm getting. So the design page has been reduced by 10 color changes. Always click new view to make sure and check that it did what you wanted it to do. So new view, and here's the original view. So what it did is it opens a new tab. So here's the first one that has the three designs. And then the second tab, they're all together in one design now. So we have the placement of the batting, which again, I told you, you don't need that um, if you're going to put the batting onto the strips like I'm going to. The second one is the tack down. Again, you don't need that either. Um, the third one is the placement for the um, fabric strips and the tack down of the fabric strip strips is number four and number five is the quilting design. So now we're down to five color steps, quick and easy. I'm going to do a file, save stitch file as. So when you do as, then it um, is doing an additional one. You don't want to save over the file that you already have. All right, and I'm going to go, you decide where you want to save it. I'm going to save mine in my documents we whisk you and say in my border three embroidery files i'm saving it in the original folder so that when i need it again it's here and ready for me all right so we this is the one by 12 and then i'm doing times three because i have three strips and this is border christmas three all right save it whatever you want that will help you to find it I'm going to say utility send to Solaris. You can just send it to your USB stick. I've got a separate video on how to do just that since I get that asked a lot. Um, so file send to machine, that one is done. Now I'm gonna do file new page and I'm gonna do that same process with the one by seven file. So I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, you can go to merge stitch file and navigate to that folder, or if you already have your folder open, open and handy, you can just drag that design over. All right, so there's that one. Now again, I wanna change that first color, that default one blue, or you can just highlight these first two steps and delete them. You will not need them if you're gonna add your batting strip on. So I'm gonna just quickly change that color since I need to save it um, to be able to tell everyone to bypass it. And then I'm using my arrow keys to move it over. So on these, we can use a smaller hoop. This is the one by seven, but I still want three. I bet you I can do an eight by eight. Let's try that. So um, preferences folder, I'm gonna go to eight by eight hoop. Yep, that should work great. All right, and then I'm gonna say control C to copy and control V like victory to paste. It goes right on top of that first one. So I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to move it over to the center. A little too far, there we go. All right, and then control V again to paste a third one. And I'm just gonna bring it all the way over to the right hand side. Got plenty of room for these, that'll be great. All right, and that's those are done. Now we just have to do that color sort because um, right now we have 15 color steps. So I'm going to go to utility, color sort. Again, zero tolerance. None of these are checked. New view. All 
All right, so here's that tab with the three different designs. Um, you can see three different designs here. In the next tab, they're all together in one, and we're down to five color steps. All right, excuse my husband. Storm. It's um, sneezing. He does it very loud. Um, all right, so those are done. Um, so one thing I want to point out, I have a little bit of extra space. I could have moved them over further, but now that they are color sorted, I cannot do that. So make sure to make any changes to um, the the layout before you do a color sort, or you can always go back to this first tab and move them over. I've got plenty of room, so I'm not even going to bother, but I just want to point that out that you cannot move them once they're all together because now it's all just one design. All right, so that one is done. I'm going to do a file save stitch file as, and I'm going to say one times seven times three border Christmas three. All right, and I'm going to send it to my machine, or you can save it to your USB stick, either way, whatever works for you. All right, that was really easy, and now we're going to get these done. We're going to have lots done pretty quickly. All right, let's go ahead and get started.
And how are you doing with your goal? So I'm going to change my goal. I hope you don't mind too much. I've been sharing very personal stories throughout this, this entire um, project so far, and it's hard. It, it takes um, a lot of energy, a lot of time for um, adding in the photos and just, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like... Um, I don't know. I don't like the spotlight on me. So I'm, I'm over it. I will give you one more story. And then after today, I'm going to switch to a different goal. And, um, I hope you're understanding of that. It's just, it's hard. I don't, I don't like it. I did good. I, I'm proud of myself. I, I put myself out there and, and I'm done. <laughs> So I'll give you one more story. Um, so recovery process was really interesting. I'll have to tell you. So I'm an extremely active person and I wasn't allowed to do anything other than get up to go to the restroom, like literally nothing else. I had to keep my arms to my sides. Um, I didn't go into a lot of detail about what was going on, but it was basically breast cancer stuff and keeping that part um, kind of personal. But Anyway, um, so I couldn't move my arms at all, like chicken arms. Like I, if I wasn't allowed to hold a book to read, I wasn't allowed to hold my phone to respond to stuff. I wasn't allowed to type on my computer, um, like nothing. The surgeon was super, super specific. Don't do anything because if, if I developed an infection, the repercussions were extreme of what the next processes would be. And kind of over all of the breast cancer stuff. So, so I did, I did, I followed directions like, Oh, I, she said I was a, uh, an A plus student. <laughs> I, I did all the right things. Uh, my husband kept mocking me saying that, um, you know, goody two shoes. I, I did all the things I was supposed to do. So I was really, really, really careful. And, Oh, I think I had like 700 emails and messages and it was a lot. And so I'm still super behind. I, I'm not caught up on, on everything, but, um, but I didn't do any of the things. So I, I did really good. Um, and my husband did phenomenal with taking care of me. Absolutely amazing. I couldn't hold a cup up to my mouth. So I was drinking out of straws. He would get me water, which I was drinking like crazy tons of water and, and I couldn't reach it in the refrigerator. So he, I mean, he literally was doing everything and like our entire pantry as after the first week I could move a little bit more. And so I wanted to be more independent. It's really hard to be um, so vulnerable and so needy. It was really hard. All of us, all of us moms know, like that's just that side of our wheelhouse. You're right. We're the ones that take care of everybody. So it, it was really hard for me, very hard for me. Um, so our pantry after, after the first week, all of the things on our pantry are brought down to the, to the bottom shelf, everything in the refrigerator, my protein shakes and water and, and vegetables, everything was down low where I could reach them. I could, I was like, we, we literally celebrated every little thing. Like, Ooh, I don't need a straw today. Ooh, antibiotics are done. Um, look at me. I can get my own water. <laughs> every little thing because it, that's all there is, right? I couldn't go out for walks. I couldn't go do a hike or go for a bike ride. I actually can't ride my bike for, for a month. You saw So I'm, even when I want to scratch my head, I, <laughs> I have to move my arms and head in a way that I can reach it. So um, when I first got to take a shower, he, I, my husband took me to um, Great Clips and the, the gal there washed my hair for me after like six days of feeling so icky. And um, it, it's... It's a lot to go through surgery. It's a lot. It's it. The whole process was a lot. And um, I allowed myself to one time, once a day, I held my phone long enough to talk to my daughter and she would read me the messages that people were, were posting and, and helped me to um, know that you guys were all pulling for me. And I'm so appreciative. I'm going to cry. All right. So anyway, I just want to thank you all for your support during this process. It was difficult for me very much. Um, but you guys were there for me and I knew you would be, and I, I'm so appreciative. And my admin team was phenomenal. They took care of everything. And, and in our Facebook group too, everybody was helping each other. Like nobody was waiting on me for weeks to answer stuff. Other people were jumping in and here's where you can find this or that. And it, it, it was just, 
amazing to see. Very appreciative. So anyway, that's our story for today that, um, that surgery sucked and <laughs> recovery sucked. It was hard, but, um, but we're through the hardest part of it. It'll be, um, another four weeks actually before I can do a lot of things. I can't ride my bike until May. Um, not allowed to do a lot of things, but I'm allowed to embroider now and I'm allowed to be back with my, my CC friends and, um, and have fun together. So let's go ahead and get started with our whisk project. I'm absolutely loving this. And my shirt today, I will add a picture. It is a zip up short sleeve. It's a, it's a fun shirt. Um, I added hope, um, a rainbow to the front of it. And then I've got a fun design on the back that I will add a photo to so that you can see it. It's a, a nice shirt, short sleeve hoodie. Um, and then it's nice cause it's going to be really nice here today and tomorrow. And then we have not good weather again for another week, but, um, for now <clears throat> we get a short sleeve shirt. I will add a link here of the, the shirt that I found on Amazon. It's a great one and it's so easy to embroider on a zipped up shirt. Let me just tell you, I really enjoy that. That's pretty convenient. So because of my surgery, I actually can't put my arms up all the way. And so I'm wearing, I'm going to be wearing zip up shirts for a little while until I'm fully done with the recovery process. So this was a great find on Amazon. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and then you get to, to do two designs. So a short one, a little one on the front, and then a bigger one on the back. So fun designs. I think I got them both from Etsy, if I recall. Um, but I will add information underneath the video.